It's November 27th, 2012. Uh, last night we had a fire in the duplex. Um, before I go into that, I just want to say that um, everybody's safe and uh, we had actually pretty minimal uh, damage done to our stuff and to the duplex. And the other thing I want to say is that um, straw bales are actually very uh, safe typically. We did uh, just about the only thing we could have done to actually have caused this. And I'll go through what the causes were so other people won't have this issue. <laughs> um, and so, uh, well, without further ado, here's what the duplex looks like today. And you can see, uh, we had to pull, we just had to pull out the bales to get it out. And, um, and it, this is actually pretty hectic. We pulled all the straw out. Um, a number of things ended up aggravating it, but I'll go into that in a minute. Um, so basically the cause of the fire was the rocket stove in here. Uh, you can't really see it, but it, it comes up here and then goes up through here. And there's cob on the other side. You can see the flue right there. Um, but there's a lot of heat that intensified right here. It got very hot here on the other side. And there's probably about... Um, Let's see, I want to say there's like four inches of cob right there. And it's not insulated cob though. And uh, what happened was, uh, I believe the uh, uh, there's an outlet on the outside of this wall. And so it melted this wire from this outlet that was plugged in the out here. And it melted this wire, uh, which is about right here. Um, and it had that... It had to be about, the wire before melting had to be about uh, at least six inches away from the bale, probably more like eight. I mean, uh, six to eight inches away from the rocket stove bend right there. But what happened, I think, is that it melted the rubber, which then, um, instead of shorting out, acted as like a resistance and kind of create, turned into a heater, basically, like a heating element. Um, if it had shorted out, it would have blown out any number of bre the breakers or the or, or even the. Uh, uh, there's a surge protector that attached in between here too. Um, so what happened was it melted that out, and instead of snapping the breakers, it just started heating up even more, which is already hot back here. So then it added that to it, and so it started a fire that bur it it burned up in here. And the only reason it was even able to burn, it was mainly just smoldering, was that we didn't have the uh, we only had the first coat of plaster on the outside and so it was able to get some oxygen and it burned up um, all the way up it also followed uh, the wire zigzagging back and forth kind of over on my side this is how I actually saw that it was going on down here it zigzagged up it, the wire kind of came this way along the the uh, uh, the buck here and there was flames shooting through this crack in the buck and it went up here, and there's another outlet up here which it melted, and then that one also started turning into a heating element and cooked out the, the box up there. So, that was, that's kind of how the fire started. Um, and uh, it would have been much smaller, but uh, I, I basically the, the reason it happened now is because I, had run, I was running the stove really hot for longer than I had before. I'd run it for about six to seven hours before, and not extremely hot. Let me show you the inside of the house. Um, but I hadn't been running extremely hot and for, or for so long. Um, so here's the rocket stove. It's just a four inch flue, so I didn't expect it to get that hot, but over a period, long period of time it got very hot. Um, this chamber right here is insulated, it doesn't get, it has just two inches of insulated cob and then another couple inches of regular um, cob on it. And uh, that takes very long to heat up, even though it's one of the hotter parts. There's a cooking spot right here, um, just for boiling water and making tea. And then the flue kind of comes through here, and then makes an elbow up here. And this corner right here gets very hot. Um, and so what we really needed to have done was put a much thicker layer of insulated cob over here. Because um, the insulated cob is really great in this. It's just vermiculite. We mix it um, two parts uh, clay, three parts sand, and five parts vermiculite. And that works really well for insulating. Um, but I didn't think it was going to get so hot. And 
it actually still would have been fine if there just hadn't been wiring in the vicinity, which it was, you know, still fairly far away. Although we did, uh, there were a couple other spots where it, the wiring does come close to the flue, which will have to be remedied in any possible, uh, and when we fix this up. <laughs> but it wouldn't have gotten so bad, except that we were hosting, um, our friends Jason and Elaine for dinner, and everybody was gone, so I shut the fire down, it burned, I let it burn down, and then I closed it up, and I left, and when I left, I smelled a little smoke, but normally you smell smoke when, uh, like when you close it up a little bit, because there's still a little bit, few little wood chips in there that didn't, weren't getting the air now that I closed it off. So I thought that was normal, and I went up, and for dinner, we were, um, smoking rib, I, I decided to smoke some deer ribs, and uh, so I just built a smoker recently, and uh, so I was running that, and so I smelled smoke a couple times, but I thought it was from the smoker. <laughs> and uh, I, so I was gone from down here for about an hour or more, and then Jesse smelled smoke. I was like, oh no, that's just the smoker, and then he looked down and it's like, the, well, the other thing was we noticed that the inverter tripped, and I didn't know, I was outside when it happened, and Jesse and John had just gotten home, and... Um, and uh, we, so we just turned it back on. Little did we know that we were just turning back on these like heaters and cooking the the duplex more. Um, and after a little while, it tripped again. So we just unplugged the unplugged the campground to see if that fixed it. We should have just come and looked around. But um, uh, then Jesse walked outside and saw flickering down in my window. And we came. I just we sprinted down here and saw the flames pouring out of here. And so that was. <laughs> So we had a delayed, delayed response because of the smoker and uh, me not even being inside. If I'd been inside just hanging out, I would have recognized what was going on. Either way, we would have had to uh, pull all these bales out eventually. I mean, we wouldn't have had as much damage. Um, but I think we'll be okay. We're going to have to, like, patch this beam across and double it up. And there's a couple of uh, roof or floor trusses that we'll have to re um, replace or double up, beef up, and fix this door buck. And then, of course, putting all the bales back, which we have extra bales, plenty to do this, and then plastering, even just to get it livable again. Um, luckily, though, Jason and Elaine showed up for dinner, and we were running back and forth hauling buckets of water. Um, and uh, let me show you the roof, because that was kind of an exciting part. Um, we were running back and forth on the, on the roof, uh, and, it, and the fire kept climbing. It climbed up this po post in here, and I think it climbed up there because there's actually a lot of loose straw kind of in there. It was mainly just um, a straw slip because it couldn't fit bale around it. Um, so there's an air gap there. Um, but uh, Jason and Lane got here, and we are running back and forth hauling buckets and throwing it on there, but we, we couldn't get at it. It was hard to get at it because it was just smoldering deep in the wall, so we had to just pull the bales up, but when we pulled them out... You know, the loose straw ignited, so we were pulling it, we pull out a bale and just be a fireball. And there's pouring, we had pulling out, throw it down, and the fire kept working its way up. Luckily, the uh, alpaca wool on the roof uh, is flame retardant, and we got it, got it, we were able to pull it out before the roof caught on fire. That's just a little bit of, I mean, it's just barely singed up there, really. Um, and the post, the main post is, is perfectly fine, it's just had some really just superficial damage. So, structurally, we're pretty okay. Um, a lot of work is going to have to go back into fixing it up, but you know, we, like all of this is learning, we're, it's bound to happen when we're trying to combine so many different techniques that we've never done before. Um, although we definitely learned a, you know, learned a good lesson here, uh, to slow it down a little bit more, especially in the design process for, for instance, like the wiring, we did the wiring and, and, and didn't, we didn't have all of the wiring schematics drawn out when we did it, we were kind of doing it piecemeal. And by the time we were putting in the flue pipe, uh, and the stove, we didn't know how the stove was going to go in either, but they were done separately, and the the wire was already buried, and it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. So not ever going to be out of sight, out of mind again, because, uh, you know, we, we end up learning some hard lessons, lessons the hard way, but uh, this kind of, that's why it's my Creek education and sustainability, because we're learning ourselves. And that's why we're making a video showing you guys how we failed, because, you know, it's, we're not really proud of it, but hey, you know, if other people can learn from our mistakes, because we certainly have. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, Maya Creek Duplex Fire of 2012.